right? So this isn't going to be my typical response video that I usually make to other creators. Usually when I make a response video, it's me being critical of the other creator because I think they're wrong in a certain subject. And, you know, uh, I'll just make a video on like why they're wrong, why I disagree and et cetera, et cetera. But not today's video. Today's video is going to be a bit different. Today, I'm going to be talking about where I honestly think I messed up with the Andy Pants drama and really where I think my reputation took a hit because I was chasing ad revenue and views rather than being genuine. And what I'm talking about specifically is when I made a video on Andy Pants talking about him saying the N-word, where I basically made a 10 minute long video going over my argument with Andy Pants and DMs, uh, you know, after I like kind of jokingly, semi-jokingly confronted him about saying the N-word. And I know what some of you guys may be thinking, Rince, why are you talking about this? It's like a month, almost two months after this entire situation happened. Why do you care? Why do you care about what uh, somebody else says about what you did during this drama? The reason I'm calling out or not necessarily calling out, but the reason I'm talking about this today is not necessarily because I'm upset or hurt by the criticism, but I need to listen to the criticism. I've become kind of bad at handling criticism within the past two to three months, and I didn't really realize it. I didn't really want to accept that. But ultimately, I, I was starting to become a bit of a douchebag. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was starting to become a douche. I was just writing off criticism as haters or people that just didn't know anything about content creation. But ultimately, my job as a content creator, more specifically as a commentary channel, is to make sure that my genuine opinion comes across as smooth and as concise as possible. And I did not do that with the video where I called out Andy Pants for saying the N-word. I did not express how I truly felt about that. And instead, what I did was I approached it from a getting views and getting ad revenue type of approach and almost a borderline hit piece type of approach rather than being genuine about how I felt about Andy Pants saying the N-word, which ultimately I thought it was funny and I didn't really care. But ultimately, I didn't really go about it like genuinely in my video. I didn't convey that I truly felt that. You know, it didn't matter that much. It didn't matter that much. It wasn't the end of the world. There's more important things to cover. Uh, and I should have covered it like with a comedic approach. I shouldn't have been all serious and all. Oh, my goodness, guys. Andy Pants said the N word. It's a new low. You know, it's so Jover. Uh, but I did. And I messed up. And ultimately, I got to start taking accountability and I got to be able to handle criticism better. It's just that simple. Uh, and this is not the only thing that I wasn't really good on handling criticism about. Uh, recently, uh, you, some of you on the Discord may have saw, I got mad at somebody for basically getting upset about a video I made where basically I made a video talking about like the anti-woke movement and like problems with the anti-woke movement. And in that video, it was 90% gameplay and just me talking. There was no like reference images or anything to like kind of prove my points or hammer my points home. It was more so just gameplay and me ranting. And somebody said, dude, you made us wait all that time just for a video. It only has gameplay and like, you know, not even like any images to like, you know, reference uh, like your points or like prove your points or like solidify your points. And I kind of got mad at that criticism. I got, you know, annoyed, upset. And I was like, well, if you spent this amount of time on a video just for people to shit on it, you'd be upset too. And then, you know, uh, Basically, I just I didn't handle the criticism very well and I should have handled it better because in my video, I literally told the anti-woke movement. I told the people on the anti-woke crowd, you know, if you can't handle criticism, not my problem, you know, like it's just criticism, take it or leave it. And I left the criticism that I got. I got mad at it, left it and ignored it. And ultimately, I was kind of being a hypocrite. It was kind of like poetic irony. You know, uh, this guy is calling out other people for not being able to handle criticism. They're soft, et cetera, et cetera. But ultimately, I was starting to become soft and not being able to handle criticism. And I'm only just now kind of like realizing that I need to change. I need to like expand. I need to like grow as a person. And that's why I want to make today's video. I want to make today's video because I want to like change and I want to like let people know that like, hey, you know, I got to do, I got to do better. You know what I mean? I got to do better and I'm trying to do better. And guys, look, I'll be the first to admit when I saw like Netherless's stream criticizing me when I saw the segment, I was mad. Okay. I was like upset. And this is like what made me realize that I got out change. And this is like ultimately why I'm more specifically making a response video to Netherless is because uh, ultimately his criticism is kind of like what sparked this light bulb in my head. That's like, dude, I really got to like grow up. You know what I mean? Like when I saw that stream segment, and, you know, the chat's criticizing me. Netherless is criticizing me. There's some dude in the call with Netherless criticizing me. No offense to him. I just don't know who he is. But, uh, you know, uh, ultimately, I was like, who the fuck are they? Like, wh why are they talking shit? Like, do you not see my other videos? Do you not see what's going on? Do you not see the bigger picture here? But ultimately, 
it's my fault for putting that stain on the bigger picture. Because if I had just never made that video, they probably would have saw the other videos that were actually good. They would have saw my other videos that I made. They would have saw my debate. They would have saw like all the other good things uh, that I did with the Andy Pants situation. But uh, and I'm not saying that because I'm trying to like stroke my ego like, oh, I did so amazing. But, you know, uh, I do think that like that, like how I went about other things with the Andy Pants situation was better than how I went about that specific video. So, yeah, I just I think if I just never made that video in the first place, then I would have saved myself some embarrassment, would have saved you guys some time. And ultimately, you know, I think it would have been a smoother series. But anyways, that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get into some of the criticism points brought up by Netherless in the stream segment. Now, we're not going to go through the entire thing. If we go through the entire thing, we'll be here for like 30 minutes. And this isn't a video that needs to be 30 minutes long. This is probably going to be like a 10 minute long video at most. But I wanted to just go ahead and bring up some clips and some points and respond to them. And yeah, let's go ahead and just take a look at this. Um... There was one time during the entire discourse where I found this video from this lovely channel named Rince. He's at like almost 3k. Pretty good number. And he made a video titled, Andy Pants Gaming Just Hit a New Low. Shmi, are you here? But <clears throat> at some point, I was watching a stream from Moment of Sanity. And I came across this video. And... I, for the life of me, did not take this video seriously. Like, yeah, you can call Andy Pants all of these things. He's a pussy. He's a grifter. All that shit. Hell, you can even call him a racist. You can argue he's a racist because of all the critiques he made towards video games, like having too many black people or something like that. And honestly, that's not even a half bad idea. I honestly probably should have used the fact that Andy Pants was so critical of people of color being in games and use that to kind of hammer home the point that if I did want to take that angle, I could argue he's racist. And I could have used that N-word DM, and I could have used that to solidify the whole racist point if I wanted to make that. I wish I thought of that when I made that video, because it probably would have been perceived a lot differently if I did take that angle. So I say, destroyed LMAO, you had to kick me out of it, and then I ratioed you on Twitter. Keep coping, LMAO. By the way, what do you think of internet grifters? I never got your opinion. By the way, just for uh, a heads up for everybody, the rest of this video is just petty high school internet drama. That's all it amounts to. Honestly, like, there's nothing I can kind of refute there. I will admit, even I cringe a little bit looking back on that video. It was really just a nothing burger. And honestly, I don't know if I can be in much room to be calling out Andy Pants for acting like a child when, you know, really, I wasn't acting too much better with that video. And I know someone might be like, well, Rince, you're 17, you're basically a high schooler. Like, it don't really matter. I mean, of course, it's going to be like high school internet drama. But still, it's just like, even, even then, I still don't think there's much of an excuse there because it's just like, you know, I knew what I was doing. I knew it wasn't like, you know, worth making a video. I know that I'm like far better than this. I knew that I was like far more mature than this. But ultimately, I kind of stooped down low. And rather than making actual an actual video that mattered and added to the drama and added to the lore, I instead, you know, uh, made a video where it really didn't add anything, but just an extra 10 minutes of ad revenue. And I should have done better because you guys deserve better. No debate string. But then when I make a video calling him out saying, yeah, you can't defend your points in a live debate. You can't defend your points in an actual discussion. Then two days later, he's on Twitter talking about some come debate me. Let's set this up. Let's go. So Andy Pants is very well aware of my existence and he very well is aware of the videos I make. But the he thing is, is, is that oh, no, he might be aware of mine, dude, because I'm covering him right now. Oh, no, he knows who you are because you called him out and you had a debate uh, with him. Shocker. One of them was aware of me at 100 subs. Well, what the fuck was your point? <laughs> like, dude, like, how big's dog, your fucking no ego? Cares. Now, this was something that multiple people brought up with me that kind of irritated me at first. But looking at it with like a clear perspective now and kind of looking at it like in retrospect in a way. I could understand why people thought I had an ego when I was like, you know, kind of constantly repeating, guys, I may have caused the drama, guys, I may have caused the drama, because it's like, you know, it, it does kind of sound like I'm trying to make everything about me and everything is about Rince and Rince did all this, when in reality, that wasn't what I meant and that's not what I mean. What I was trying to say, or what I was trying to highlight more specifically, was Andy Pants had a fragile ego and I was trying to use that as an example to display how fragile his ego was and how his ego caused like a massive blow to his reputation. But looking back on it, I went about it in probably one of the worst ways possible, trying to make it about myself and my name and the whole Rinse brand rather than trying to make it about, you know, Andy's fragile ego, right? 
and I understand now, you know, why Walter assumed I had an ego, Netherless assumed I had an ego, you know, the people in chat are mocking me and making fun of me. Now I kind of get it. And like I said, you guys deserve better than that. And ultimately, that's kind of what I want to conclude the video with is like, I could have approached some certain things in the Andy Pants situation with a way better angle. And I feel like that was one of those things. And, you know, in a way, initially when I saw Netherless's video or not video stream criticizing me, I initially was like really upset. You know what I mean? You know, I got all the people in the chat clowning on me. I even see some of the people are from Sandy stream and they're clowning on me, but they never really say anything in Sandy stream about me when I was in Sandy stream. But like, you know, it, like it kind of hurt. You know what I mean? It kind of hurt. It made me kind of like sink my nails into my chair a little bit and grit my teeth. But ultimately, it's like. I needed to hear that, you know what I mean? I'm not, and I'm not saying that because I'm like, you know, trying to like kiss ass or anything, but like, I'm being genuinely serious. Like I did need to hear that because if I didn't hear that criticism from somebody else, then I would have just went on thinking that I did everything perfectly fine and there wasn't room to improve. I already did everything good. And I just want to clarify, I have no issues with Netherless. I was actually kind of shocked when I saw him like criticizing me because I was like, uh, like I had met, like I had met him like once in like a Sandy stream or I think like he talked on the discord for like uh, 15 minutes. Right. And like that was like the most interactions I ever had with him. I think I saw like one or two of his videos after that because I was like, oh, OK, let me check out this dude's channel. And they were good videos. You know what I mean? Uh, no hate to Netherless. You know what I mean? I don't want this like video to direct any hate to Netherless. And yeah, if Netherless, if you see this video, uh, like I said, no hate. And I completely understand uh, your perspective on like that video and kind of like how I approach the whole situation. I completely get it. I probably have the same perspective if I was in your shoes too. So yeah, that's really all I wanted to say. Uh, I got some work to do uh, with handling criticism and, uh, you know, uh, approaching things. And yeah, that's about it. See ya.